In the book of Genesis, chapter 15, the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your reward. Abram replied, But Lord, what can you give me? You have given me no offspring. Then the Lord took him outside and said, Look at the sky and count the stars if you're able to. Your offspring will be that numerous. But Abram replied, Lord God, how can I know that I will possess it? The Lord said to him, Bring me a three-year-old cow, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. So he brought all these to him, split them down the middle, and laid the pieces opposite each other. But he did not cut up the birds. Now there's a tradition in Israel for the fathers of the bride and groom of every wedding to come together and make a covenant. To do this, they bring a three-year-old cow, a three-year-old female goat, three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. They split them down the middle and lay them opposite each other, but they do not cut the birds. Then they proceed to take turns passing through the blood of these animals. What this says is, if my child does not keep all of their promises, then you can kill me and walk through my blood. In Genesis, the next thing that we see is the sun is setting and a deep sleep fell upon Abram and suddenly great terror and darkness descended upon him. Abram knew of this covenant. He knew that these animals were used for this reason. And he knew he could not live up to his promises. When the sun had set and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch appeared and passed between the divided animals. What we see here is God Almighty, the all-consuming fire, passed through this blood twice, as if to say, if I don't keep my promises, then you can kill me and walk through my blood. And if you don't keep your promises, then you can kill me and walk through my blood. Now in the time of Moses, they did a daily sacrifice to remember this covenant. Every day at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m., they would sacrifice a firstborn lamb without blemish or spot with the blowing of a shofar. Now when the shofar was blown, the people would remain silent until the lamb had died. And they would pray and ask God to please keep his promise. Now in the New Testament, we read of Mary giving birth to Jesus. And he is God Almighty manifest in flesh and blood. She gives birth to him in a manger in Bethlehem. And people come from all around to bow to the King of Kings. He grows up and performs miracles. He heals lepers. He makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. He feeds 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. And he never commits one sin. We then see him taken, wrongfully tried, beaten, bruised, cut, spit upon. His beard is ripped from his face, and with a crown of thorns upon his head, he is nailed to a cross to die for everyone to see. Now this is going on outside the gates of Jerusalem, but inside the gates of Jerusalem is the Passover sacrifice. All of these people have gathered inside the city to see and participate in the sacrifice and to pray that God would keep his promise. And the lamb was brought to the altar, the shofar was blown, and as the people were completely silent, waiting for the lamb to breathe its last breath from the outside of town, they hear, It is finished! And on the day of the Passover celebration, at 3 o'clock p.m., as the shofar...